teachers of Reddit. What project has a student completed that was so far beyond the scope of the assignment that you just had to give them 100 for the amount of effort put in? High school biology teacher here. My year 12 students were to complete an extended experimental investigation on any topic. This one student chose to do hers on bird populations and habitat distribution. She spent weeks collecting data in the field and produced a draft report that was so good that I had difficulty advising her on how to improve for the final. After she submitted it and received an A+, I suggested she apply to have it published in an ornithological journal. She did and they accepted it, making her my first student to be published while still at high school. So proud. That is awesome. The assignment was to design an office for a small business. Select the hardware, workstations, printers, network equipment etc. Make a sketch for how the network would be set up and then make a sales pitch to me, the client. Most students chose the easy way with pre-built hardware and some went more in depth with custom builds for most things. Their sketches were mostly top down views of the office with lines going from computers to switches to routers. This was sufficient. One student however made a very detailed 3D model of the office using SketchUp. It had everything. Doors. Windows, baseboards, every piece of hardware and raised floor for the cables. He also made a complete diagram for the cables, showing where each ethernet cable from all the equipment went. The workstations, servers, switches and routers were all custom builds. He even divided the workstations into groups and gave them different network rules. Top notch execution from that kid. I just read about a Danish student that was writing about a German warplane that went down near his house during World War II and he decided to go out to see if he could find small bits from it because he assumed the Germans would have came and got it. After it went down, lo and behold he found the entire plane with the bodies inside. I would say that's above and beyond. My 7th graders just wrote a fictional narrative story, intended to be a short story. This was a culminating paper at the end of a unit. I did not give a length requirement, just that it needed all parts of a plot. One girl wrote an interesting, suspenseful, well written story. It was 58 pages long. I had just moved back to middle school after teaching high school for a few years and hadn't fully gauged what was doable and impossible for most students yet. I gave them a bit of a pre-assessment to see what we needed to work on and such. One of the questions asks them to draw an inference from a few pieces of a story. The number of actual pieces of artwork I saw while grading tests was at first head shaking and then kind of hilarious. One student actually drew an incredibly detailed and accurate answer, without words mind you, that I felt I had no choice but to give him full credit for it and a point or two of extra credit for being so creative. He answered it in a way that was more difficult than actually using words. 6th grade class, assignment was to redesign packaging for a product of their choice. A student designed the packaging, tracked down the factory of the original product they were a local small business and worked with their design team to actually manufacture their package. The marketing team was so impressed with her initiative that they used it for a limited edition run of a product. But the day came to turn in the project and I said Holly, where's your assignment and she said aisle 12 of the drugstore. Probably had a huge parental time investment as well. Anyway that must have been a really good experience for the child. My friend and I misread the instructions for a project in English in high school. We were supposed to draw modern outfits for characters in King Lear but we thought we had to make the outfits. We took Barbie dolls and bought fabric and sewed 5 different outfits to put on the dolls. It took us 2 weeks to finish. Still feel stupid looking back on that one lol. Don't write that kind of story and not tell us the reaction. I had a second grader research, demonstrate and write a 5 page report on Fibonacci numbers. I was completely amazed by the kid all year long and how hard he worked. His teacher this year cannot be bothered to push him and he's already starting to hate school because he's bored. That was me in second grade. I had the opposite problem in college, though. I teach high school history and asked my students to do an essay on the city of Troy during Trojan War. Some kid made the Trojan horse out of popsicle sticks and put in an essay about the Greek soldiers during the Trojan War. A bit late but I think this is a pretty good one. 
I teach English in Vietnam and assigned my teens class the task of writing a scary story for Halloween. They were allowed to work in pairs if they wanted or they could do it on their own. Most did write their own stories on paper and handed them in. Two students chose to work together. The day the story was to be finished they asked if they could have some time in class to share their story. I granted. Turned out they didn't write a story. They had made a presentation with hand drawn pictures on powerpoint and they told their story to the class. It was about 30 minutes long. It blew me away that they were able to talk for that long in their non native language. They made a few mistakes but overall this was so good that I gave them each 100%. The other students in class didn't complain at all when they didn't get 100. Upvoted because you are actually a teacher. I asked for students to create something that demonstrates Newton's laws of motion. Some were cool, like a slingshot, but this one kid who was typically an underachiever went above and beyond and made a balloon powered car. Not me, but another student a teacher told us about when telling us that there was a limit on how much extra credit you could earn. This teacher was a science teacher, one of the best, if not the best, my homeschool district ever had the luck to employ, and he was fond of hands on learning. For example, why lecture about genetics and phenotypes, along with adaptation and evolution, when you can recreate fruit fly experiments with the students to show them. He did this for years, but one year, someone left a cap open. Fruit flies everywhere in his classroom. And being fruit flies, they weren't in a hurry to leave. So he offered extra credit, to the degree of a part of a point per fruit fly killed. A good way to knock the population down, and give some students something to do if they weren't going to go their work. Enter one studious student, who already had a perfect grade, who saw opportunity, who would quietly finish their work, and then go to work hunting fruit flies. The numbers gradually petered out, and the teacher thought nothing of it. Until the students showed up with pages of printer paper, all with neat little rows of fruit flies glued to them and counted out. The number of flies was in the thousands. This student already had a perfect or near perfect grade. By the point system the teacher had devised, which he held to, the student went right to a grade of over 500%. The teacher was called in before the school board to explain what had happened. The grade stood, but fruit flies were gone and his extra credit points were capped at a total of 125% after that. I got the exact opposite of this from a teacher once. We were doing reports on different historical figures and I had chosen Amelia Earhart. We were encouraged to do anything we wanted to make the report interesting. So, me, second grader, wrote two pages front and back about her life, history, stuff she did outside of flying, etc. And I cosplayed her. Had the leather bomber jacket, the pants, an exact replica of the pilot hat and goggles she wore, everything. Everyone else in my class basically just turned in a couple of paragraphs, and even my classmates were amazed by how much work I put into the project. Teacher gave me a 99%. I would have been fine with this but some of my classmates, on hearing the announced score, actually demanded to know why I didn't get 100 because I had gone so far above and beyond. Teacher's response, I don't give 100s, because no one is perfect. The fact that I still remember that incident so clearly almost 30 years later probably says how fair that felt. In 5th grade, we read Island of the Blue Dolphins. Afterward, we were assigned to write a short paragraph imagining what happened after Karana left the island. Well, I had already read this book a year or two prior. And I thought the ending was bulls. So instead of a paragraph, I wrote three chapters, starting with Karana jumping off the boat again. My teacher actually called my mother to talk about my creative writing skills. Apparently, I had written the additional chapters in the same tone and style as the author and that was unusual for a 10 year old. This teacher actually followed up with me well into high school to make sure I was still writing. Meanwhile, I just thought Karana should never have left her dang island. I learned a life lesson about this question in 11th grade. The project in math class was to take a given amount of paper and build a 3D object of maximum volume. The second best entry took maybe 2 hours. One team put theirs together during the break period immediately prior to class. I led my team and worked 40 hours. We skipped the paper and switched to poster paper. With a little math, I designed a icosahedron. 20 sided die, 
and wasted no more than one stroke two square inch of material. I had the teacher's husband cut up some balsa wood for me to create reinforced edges. We glued the edges and faces together making a solid object. Then we taped each edge, put in the numbers 120, in the correct order, and painted the entire thing. In total the volume was double the second place team. It was so over the top that the teacher asked to keep it to show off to future students. We got a 103% on the project and several other teams got 100%. The lesson is, if you are going to put forth extra effort then make sure that the reward is worth the effort. Comma we got a 103% on the project. I see you rolled a natural 20. Not a teacher but a guy who got a 100%. In high school I took drama 1 my sophomore year. The second week of school we had to do a lip snick to a song of our choice. We were graded on accuracy of lyrics, commitment to the singing dancing, entertainment value, and maybe one or two other things. I was on the water polo and swim team and really lean, and of course had a speedo. I did a strip tease to Bloodhound Gang's Bad Touch. Our teacher wrote about a half page of feedback for everyone that did the assignment. Not me. All I got was a 100 and a single sentence probably the less I say, the better. You my friend, have balls. And the teacher saw their outline. Sorry, not a teacher, but last year for a history project we were required to dress up as an important historical figure, write a 10 page biography of them, and give an 8 minute first person speech on it. I chose Queen Mary I, and I spent roughly 20 hours sewing a dress that was as accurate as I could. The skirt was floor length and took over like 12 feet of fabric. The bodice was stuffed with stiff fabric and had a lace up back to mimic a corset, etc. All my friends wore sheet togas. I gave my high school students a test where they had to show they knew definitions of words. They were allowed to draw pictures to help explain the definition. One kid obviously didn't study so for the word writhe he drew a picture of Mike Tyson with a speech bubble that said writhe and beans. I had to give him a few points for that answer solely because I laughed about it for hours. I spelled choir as choir on a spelling test once because I drew a total blank on the word, despite being a member of a choir at the time, looked it up in the dictionary later and got the credit for the alternate word. Not a teacher, but something I did that went beyond the scope of the project. It was 8th grade music class and our music teacher told us to choose a song and then, after listening to it, write out what we hear without using traditional music notes or scales. Most of my classmates use dots and dashes for their songs to mark out the beats of the song they chose. The most of them chose short, 2-3 minute songs. I basically took the instructions literally and tried my best to draw out exactly what I heard. I chose an instrumental piece that was 5 minutes long, giving each instrument a different color and shape, and then drawing out each instrument's part, making sure that each part was drawn to match up exactly where it was amidst the other instrument's parts for every second of the song. The whole thing was spread out across 10 pages of horizontal A4 paper and took 3 days. I was one of two people that got an A plus for that project. Not a teacher but student. In high school English we read the crucible and as groups we had to pick a scene and videotape us acting it out. Well we got costumes, printed out cards with our lines, filmed it in a church, trial scene, did special lighting, different angles, and edited it all together. We spent over a week on it. When we watched the others in class, all the other groups were just standing in a half circle in the woods reading out of their textbooks. The teacher was so impressed she showed it to all of her other classes and her classes the next couple of years. I think we got a 96. Still peeved about that, but that was like a 150 for her. Still have the videotape somewhere. I wanna see it. Not a teacher but in college I made a promotional video for my uni as an assignment for marketing assignment. The teacher didn't like it much, gave it 82 out of 100. Week later admissions officers contacted me for permission to use the video in their official promotional campaign. That's great. Total burn on the professor as well. Not a teacher but, in 8th grade we were doing a book over the great depression and we had the choice of doing 2 of 9 projects given to us. One kid thought all of it was bull and just decided to write an 100 page alternative screenplay on the book with directions, instructions for effects and stuff. I'm not sure if the teacher even read the play though. Do you know if the student asked in advance if it was okay or did he surprise her on the due date? 
It was a project on modern culture. One girl did an entire documentary on makeup styles, research all the brands, the original ingredients and designs. She interviewed men and women who were teens in the different decades. She explained how the chemistry and society influenced makeup colors and style all the way to the late 90s. She even did a montage of the styles on herself. What made it even better was that she only used an iPad and free editing software. That sounds really creative our Cooper Diction would love it. Back when I taught elementary, thank god I am in a high school setting now, I held a read aloud session every week where one of the students could write a story and read it aloud. It wasn't an assignment but one of my students wrote an entire spin-off story to the original Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game. After several weeks of this, he had an entire game's worth of story written. Disregarding terrible penmanship and some bad spelling, it was really good and literally all of my students stopped participating because they only wanted to hear this one kid's piece. 10 stroke 10 hope he becomes an author and quotes me as his inspiration. So, my parents were always the parents that got overly involved in my school projects. Whether it was drawing the art way too well, or making 40 homemade pizzas for my Wolfgang Puck project, either I was a child genius or my parents were involved. But, the clear worst offender was when in 7th or 8th grade we read a book called The Pushcart Wars and were required to make a shoebox pushcart. Well of course my dad being into woodworking decided that it would make sense to make a full size working wooden pushcart together and document the process. So of course I showed up on the day of the presentation with a fully working pushcart food and all, and a totally not suspicious binder with pictures documenting me building it myself. I don't think my teacher bought it, but I got an A. TLDR was supposed to make a shoebox pushcart. Parents got overly involved and made a full size fully working wooden pushcart. Man reminds me of my parents. I had to do a speech in my English class as a Roman soldier and my dad made me a to scale Roman shield complete with metal boss. Only guy to show up in costume. We had to create a dystopian society for English while in high school. Or as my buddies and I decided, a left handed utopia. All the other groups did basically the same idea. We were the different ones and did not take the project seriously at all. We had to create names for our characters so we used horrible puns. Had a wonderfully drawn propaganda poster, and a list of all the rules. Our idea was simply, left handed people now rule the world. All group members were southpaws and loved the idea. I remember our teacher came to ask if we needed any help with our world building. Here are our character names. Turned around and walked away. She even said we had the most creative world. Slightly relevant, but Link not being left handed in bot war made me feel discriminated against. Okay, not relevant at all, lol. But at least I rule a part of the world in your scenario. Student here. We had to make a movie that was a comedic ray telling of the Odyssey in high school. Right when I movie first got popular. Our group was all girls and despite being told multiple times that it wouldn't be funny because, girls, our girly 2000s were not the best, we got really into it, shooting for an entire weekend across town, using a family dog and dressing it up as the Cyclops, adding in the pew pew Star Wars shooting effects. We tried our best and made a pretty dang funny 5 minute video. Our teacher was so impressed she continually showed it as an example for the next few years and we got a straight up 100 on it. Once put extra effort into making weather maps for a science class, using poster paper instead of printer paper and making meticulous maps. I'm a geographer now. It was a sign. They were wrong but I said that aliens had messed with the radar and was given extra credit. It was a weird moment in time. No it was a poster. Dunno if this counts. I'm taking a college econ course right now and the professor gives out an extra project for honors kids taking the class. This year it was this national competition for data analytics hosted by a large consumer bank. In the email, he also added that anyone to win would receive an automatic A plus in the class. I'm pretty sure neither him nor anyone else expected anyone to actually win. But I put in a submission and won one of the 7 winner spots. I now have an A plus in the class while my friends just finished a semester long project. Tons of homework and have a final this Friday. I got a 50% on the first midterm lmao. I'll take practical application over a test taker any day. 
I'm the student, but in sophomore year, my Chinese teacher said anyone would be exempt from the final at the end of senior year if they went to China prior to it. I ended up transferring out of the school and resigned myself to the fact that I would take an extremely intense final at the end of 4 years of Chinese study. Fast forward to the end of senior year, I single handedly raised enough money for myself, my teacher, and some classmates to go to Taiwan. While on the trip I came to find out my teacher was friends with my previous Chinese teacher and that he knew of her promise. Having told her to do it, in all of his years of teaching, no one had ever followed through before. He honored the automatic 100 on my final, and gave me 15 extra credit points. I ended the year with 110% in Chinese. Back in high school my history teacher let us pick topics to do a report on. We were essentially supposed to make a 4 minute summary of the events to tell what happened and demonstrate we understood it to some degree. I was at the screw it point cause of personal stuff so I just made that my project for the week and essentially made a mini doc that went for somewhere around a half hour or more I think. We only needed summary bullets and pictures along with like 3-5 sources. I ended up with dozens of sources, video and movie clips from different places, slides up the wazoo, 2-3x the amount of info per side as the next person's. I still have it to this day. I am proud of it and I think I always will be. A student of mine decided to not take the state tests at the end of the year. Instead, he asked if he could write a paper. He wrote about infinity and how there is no such thing as a truly infinitely small measurement. His premise was that if it were true that reality, and our perception of time, is based on a series of infinitely small moments in time and space, then it would be impossible for anything to move as we do in reality. Since stacking infinitely small time measurements and distances would result in nothing at all. Instead, he posited that at very, very small scales, time and objects are teleported from one moment to the next, something like a stop motion picture at very small scales. By setting a limit to how small something can get, his conjecture was that this would allow reality to be perceived as it is, for things to be in motion across time and space. An 11 year old developed his own understanding of Planck length, Planck time, and quantum mechanics, independent of research. You freaking bet I showed that to the entire department. I really hope you talked to that kid about those concepts and pushed him to take more science courses so he could explore this ideas further. I was that kid. We had a project in history when I was around 13 to write a compiled report on any period of history that we felt was interesting. Around 10 pages, I guess. I decided to write mine on the Somme, because I'm a World War 1 nerd. As I was finishing my report on a few of the major actions of the war, my mum mentioned that I had a great uncle that died in the Somme. Well, dang it, I read going to add him as a case study at the end. I got the usual family brick a brack war photo, etc, when my grandma mentioned that he sent letters of his time there, in the report they went, I also got copies of his war records and decorations, then came half term, and our family happened to go to France camping, guess where we near, that's right, I dragged my family all the way there, it was only an hour or so away, and took detailed photos and notes of where he had been, etc, and culminated in finding his grave in a World War 1 cemetery. All of that was pretty ridiculous for a year 9 project, but then my grandma mentioned that one of his previous unit was still alive in a nursing home nearby. I simply had to interview him and it turned out that he was in my great uncle's squad for part of the war and knew him well. He had loads of anecdotes of the battle and of him, and I made copious notes of our interview. I handed it on to my teacher and he was floored. Got 100% on the project because I turned a 10-15 page report into a 100 plus page epic with actual on the ground research. Our school had a prize day at the end of the year, mainly for sports and music, and my history teacher actually commissioned a prize specially for me. It was for all academic subjects for work that exceeded expectations, or something. Only worth a 30 pound book voucher but a nice thought. I still stayed in touch with and visited the veteran until he died in 2007. He was a super nice guy and had an awesome family. I still love history, but don't do much with it anymore. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.